Week after week, thousands of us have been in training ever since we in New Zealand undertook to pull our weight in this war. We knew, and the men in camp knew, that the training was for a war that would be fought on the other side of the world. We knew that ships would take the New Zealanders there, and already many of those who went have fought and suffered in the front line. Yet until now, only a handful of us have known what troop departures look like, how it feels to say au revoir to soldier friends and relations at the ship's side, the sorrow and the pride of it. Just a few months ago, these men were working alongside of us in shops, factories, cow sheds and offices, good workers and good friends. We might be talking to a man in the tram or in the pub one day and find him in uniform the next week. Or we might be Anzacs ourselves. This is a war with everyone in it, women too. It is just a matter of taking our turn. In a few weeks or a few months, we may be on the inside, trained, skilled, and proud of it. So we look on at what might be ourselves. It's not just another army marching past, but our army. They weren't used to marching in step then, but if marching had been a useful job in civil life, they would have done it. If it's milking, they can milk. If it's building roads, they can navvy. If it's banking, they can bank. And if it's fighting, they can make a pretty thorough job of that too. Anytime we see them, they are marching or on parade with only their shoulder patches to show that here's a group of men skilled in every trade and profession. Soldiers who used to be civilians and took all their skill into the army with them. Artillery, nurses, army service corps, signalers, air force and plain PBI. Gunners, doctors, grocers, telegraph operators, men from the public works and women from the hospitals, 